Hi friends, this is a very interesting application of artificial intelligence in an area in mechanical and industrial engineering called condition-based monitoring. Right? I'll explain you what condition-based monitoring is and I'll tell you, I'll give you some overview of how various techniques in artificial intelligence and deep learning can be used for condition-based monitoring. Right? So if you want to think about condition-based monitoring, the word itself tells you a lot. Right? So based on the condition of a electromechanical equipment, like motors, think about it. You might in, in a large factory, right, or a large uh, industrial complex, you would have thousands and thousands of uh, motors, rotors, etc. right? All these are electromechanical components. Now condition-based monitoring deals with diagnosis and maintenance and timely maintenance of this electromechanical equipment. Think about it like this, right? So we have done a Fitbit case study. If you remember, we have done a Fitbit case study. We have done a Fitbit case study in our course, wherein we used data from the accelerometer and the gyroscope, right, in the Fitbits, to, to understand whether a person is walking, sitting, sleeping, etc. Right? Similarly, if I have some ways to measure vibrations or any anomalies or any problems in electromechanical equipment, if I have some way to measure them, I can use those signals and diagnose the problems before something really goes bad, right? Here, we once I diagnose the problem, I should be able to run some maintenance checks and fix whatever are the problems. So condition-based monitoring in a nutshell is about timely maintenance of your electromechanical equipment and being able to diagnose problems in your motors or any electromechanical equipment well in advance so that you don't have downtime, right? So having said that, there are multiple ways of performing condition-based monitoring and maintenance. Here are some of the simple ones that I learned about, right? By the way, I don't have any background in this area. I, my, my core expertise is AI. But I thought this is a very interesting area of application for state of the art in AI. And this could have huge implications for factories, right? It could be millions of dollars of savings in and having much higher quality and much higher lifespan of equipment, right? So here are four broad techniques that I learned about. And I think in all of these techniques, we can use state of the art in AI. I'll go over step by step. So first is something called as a vibration analysis. So vibration analysis, just like our Fitbit, where we used an accelerometer and a gyroscope, vibration analysis is, is a very often done form of diagnosis, right? So what is done here is they use something called as industrial grade accelerometer. These are not the accelerometers that you have in your smartphones or Fitbits. These are industry grade accelerometers that can measure very minute vibrations also, right? So they take the, so they basically use these accelerometers to measure the vibrations. Imagine if I have a motor, imagine if I have a motor with some rotor around it, right? They would place these accelerometers on, on various parts of the motor, measure the vibrations, and, and will be able to diagnose what problems exist in the motor, right? For example, here is a very nice video that I've come across. Oh, by the way, there is a very nice Wikipedia article on condition-based monitoring that will give you a lot more details. What I've told you is a very simplified definition. Right. So in short, it is maintenance when need arises. Right. Very simply, very well put here. So I was when I was learning about this vibration analysis and uh, I came across this very interesting institute called the Mobius Institute, which is considered a pioneer and, and which provides training for mechanical experts in vibration analysis to be able to diagnose and maintain the equipment at factories. Very, very nice website. I also liked their, some of their videos, phenomenal animations, love the content, right? So here, here is one snapshot that I've taken here. So imagine if you, have, if you have a gear of some sort or if something is rotating, if you have a motor that is rotating. In vibration analysis, what you get is basically a time series data like this. This is your time series data, right? This is your time series data of vibrations, right? And on this time series data, they have computed the Fourier transform, the fast Fourier transform. Right? We have discussed how to handle time series data in our course. We've also discussed about I-15, lots of detail, right? 
So it, the vibration analysts typically take vibrations from accelerometers, from industry grade accelerometers, and the data they collect is in a nutshell, a time series waveform. It's, it's simply a time series waveform and this waveform and this waveform they later, sorry, they later convert this waveform, they later convert this waveform into, they convert this waveform into your Fourier, into Fourier space. And using the data in the Fourier space and the time series data, they would be able to diagnose. Now this is done by experts in condition-based monitoring. And we'll come, to, we'll come to how AA can be applied. First, let's understand the three, four top techniques. The next technique is called the ultrasound analysis, right? Wherein, which is, which is very similar to vibration analysis, but this is done at ultrasound frequencies. So there is a very interesting, uh, there is a very interesting company called UE Systems, which is one, which is one of the best companies out there for ultrasound inspection of equipment, right? Even in the ultrasound case, even in the ultrasound, even in the ultrasound case, the data that you collect is effectively time series data. Of course, it's at ultrasound frequencies. The vibration analysis is at the accelerometer data that you collect is at different frequencies. And the ultrasound analysis, like the using the equipment by UE systems and other providers, in a nutshell, this is also a time series waveform, right? Which could also be converted into the Fourier space using fast Fourier transform, and a lot of analysis can be performed on top of it. Similarly, there is a third type of analysis called the electrical signature analysis, right? Wherein again, in, in an electrical signature analysis, again, I'm not an expert in this area. This is what I quickly learned from Wikipedia and other sources. Right? Even an electrical signal signature analysis, what they are measuring is basically the electrical the electrical signals, not the vibration signals. Imagine what they are what they are measuring in the vibration analysis is the is the mechanical vibrations, the actual physical vibrations. In the ultrasound, they are looking for sound, which is at ultrasound frequencies. In electrical signature, they are measuring the electrical signals, their amplitudes, their frequencies, etc., and we, these are the electrical signatures of the electricity that is that is passing through your electromechanical equipment. Even that can be thought of as simply time series data, right? So all these three techniques, if you think about them, okay, from from a machine learning or an AI perspective, they are simply time series data for you. Of course, the vibration is at a different frequency. Ultrasound is at a different frequency. In electrical signatures, we are measuring actual electrical data. So this is a simple example of data that is collected in electrical signature analysis, right? And the fourth one, very interestingly, is called thermography, right? So thermography, so all these are time series data. If you think about them, all the first three methods that we learned about, which is vibration analysis, ultrasound analysis, and electrical signature analysis, the data is time series. Because in a machine learning context, you only care about the data, right? It doesn't matter what data it is, as long as you can build a machine learning model on top of it, we can still make things work. So I'll come to all three of them. I'll also come to thermography. So in thermography, what you get is basically images like this. Thermography measures how hot an equipment is using infrared cameras, right? Using infrared. So suppose if you look at this, this is a motor. This is a motor that is running. And this is the image that you get. So in thermography, what you get is images of motors. And of course, the redder something is, the hotter that part is, right? So in this case, this part is very, very hot, right? So you, what you get in thermography is basically images. Now, now let's jump to, so we have understood what CBM is, what all are the, so what are the data that we can obtain, right? In vibration, ultrasound and electrical signature analysis, we get time series data. In thermography, we get image data. Now let's understand how A can help us here, right? So let's take our vibration, our vibration analysis, our ultrasound analysis, our ultrasound analysis, and our electrical signature analysis. That's one part, that's one type. The second type that we have is your thermography. Again, they, they, I believe there are many other techniques also, which I'm not aware of. These are the few things that I have learned about quickly, right? So if you take all of them, all of them literally give you time series data. Of course, there are different types of time series with different frequencies, different amplitudes, etc. But given any time series, we can convert it into the Fourier transform, right? We can perform fast Fourier transform and convert into the Fourier space. 
Similarly, what you have here is images, right? What we have here is images, right? So one thing, so now, now the big question is how can AI be applied here, right? How can AI be applied here? How can AI be applied here? That's very simple. Imagine if I have lots of data. Imagine if I have lots of data about various vibration. Let's take vibration because whatever we learn, whatever strategy we design for vibration, we can extend it for ultrasound and electrical signature analysis also. Imagine somebody gives me some type, some waveform. Suppose somebody gives me some waveform like this and says, when you, when you observe this type of waveform, here is the fault type. So they can say the fault type here is some 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 fault type one okay i don't know much about the types of faults myself right so if you if you're given lots of data like this wherein i need a snippet of actual observation data so i need time series data as input and i also need to know what type of fault has occurred when i see this signature of course there will be some some signatures here or some waveforms where there is no fault right so literally the data that you will have is like this you will have lot of so you the first one this whole thing is a time series and you'll say fault type either it's a no fault right or you'll have one more wave signal here and you'll have fault type one so you'll have lots of data like this and this data could be vibration data ultrasound data or electrical signature data once you have data like this we can apply machine learning techniques i mean we can apply a spectrum of machine learning techniques we can apply recurrent neural networks especially the lstms Right, And we have seen in our course that LSTMs work phenomenally well for time series data. They work like magic. And they're some of the most powerful algorithms in deep learning for, for tasks like this. So this is certainly one approach that we can take. The other approach we can take is we can feature, see, some of these may be very simple rules, right? Some of the simple vibration analysis might be, okay, if I have frequency at some value or if I have these types of frequencies. So this is the most advanced technique. The most advanced technique would be to use RNNs. We can also use simple rule-based systems. We can use simple rule-based systems also to diagnose some of the problems, not all the problems, right? So we have a spectrum of techniques that, that we can use from simple rule-based systems to, to simple featureizations, simple featureizations, as we have discussed in the course, simple featureizations of moving windows, etc. right? To advanced state-of-the-art RNNs. I'm sure most of these problems in vibration, sound analysis, ultrasound analysis and DSA can be solved. We'll start with some simple analysis using simple rule-based systems. If it doesn't work, we'll use all of the featureizations of time series data like moving window averages, all of that stuff. Or we can use state-of-the-art advanced systems where we simply input the time series and let your deep learning models like LSTMs figure out what to do, right? Second is thermography, right? In the case of thermography, what we have is images. Even here, the data will look like this. You will have an image, you will have an image, let's say image one, and what is a fault type, right? Similarly, you'll have image two, what is a fault type? Could be no fault, so on and so forth. Once you have images, as we have learned in the course, we can use state of the art in convolution neural networks, right? Which are, which, are, which are some of the most powerful techniques in deep learning today, right? So we can simply use these advanced convolution neural network techniques in deep learning and just train it on this data. And I'm sure it will work very, very well because CNNs work on a wide spectrum of problems and CNNs have been shown to work on for human diagnosis, right? Diseases like on MRI scans, they work very well. On X-rays, they work very well. There is a lot of research in this area. I'm very sure given your thermography images, CNNs can be made to work like magic. And by the way, CNNs have been used for thermography X-rays, thermographic images for breast cancer. They've already been used for human cases. Here, literally, what are we doing? We are diagnosing electromechanical equipment. Instead of diagnosing humans, like in medical fields, we are diagnosing electromechanical equipment using mechanical vibrations, ultrasound, electrical signature, or thermography, right? I see a lot of potential, a lot of future in this space because this, this condition-based monitoring is a big field which can save hundreds of millions of dollars for many, many industries across the world, for many, many companies and factories. In a factory, a 5 to 10% saving in in the cost of mechanical, in, in, in a factory, the cost of electromechanical equipment is very, very high, right? So a 5 to 10% saving here is still significant, 
right? So AI can diagnose these problems faster, more effectively, and I think I think it is possible that using state of the art, just like the way we have seen in medicine, right? Today there are many many medical machine learning and deep learning systems that are on par with with experts in medicine, with like with uh, with experts in cancer research in radiology, right? I think just the way we state of the art machine learning and deep learning systems have been able to diagnose human problems as well as specialist doctors. I see the possibility that AI based systems that use LSTMs and CNNs can be almost on par, if not better, on par with experts in condition based monitoring, thereby saving cost, thereby saving time, and most importantly, thereby saving mechanical equipment.